What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel or welcome to those of you who are new here. My name is Katie and this is the first video of a brand new series that I'm calling Countdown to Debt Freedom. So if you are new here and never seen any of my videos before, my channel is basically about getting my family on track financially. We had six figure debt for a very long time and back in 2022, we started getting very serious about paying that off and budgeting. So I only started budgeting with a real budget back in 2022. Before that, we were kind of going back and forth with budgeting loosely and then paying on debt and then adding on more debt. And it was kind of a mess until 2022 when we became serious about debt payoff. So last month in September of 2024, we finally reached a very exciting milestone of being under six figures in our total debt balances. Now this is non-mortgage debt. So we do have a mortgage in addition to the debts that we are trying to pay off, but I'm just talking about non-mortgage debt right now. We are under six figures, which was very exciting because I talked about hitting that milestone for a very long time. And I was tired of having six figure debt. It definitely feels like a huge weight and it weighs you down and sometimes makes you feel very discouraged. So I was very excited to hit that milestone at the end of September. So hitting that $100,000 milestone or getting under that $100,000 milestone, I should say, really prompted me to start thinking about when we could realistically have all of our non-mortgage debt paid off. And I started crunching some numbers. I started looking at what we've done over the past year and I did come up with a target debt payoff date. So my original goal when I started this channel was to be debt free by February of 2028 because my husband turns 40 in March of 2028. And I just really wanted to be debt free by the time that he turned 40 because a lot of the debt that we have is student loan debt from him. And I didn't want him to take any of those student loans into that decade of his life. Plus when he turns 40, my oldest son will be starting his senior year of high school and I wanted to have all of my husband's student loans taken care of before my oldest starts college so that we could really start to help our kids a lot more and to set them up for a brighter future so that they didn't have to get into the trap of taking out student loans. So February 2028 was my original goal of when I wanted to be debt free. But getting to the point we are at now, I knew that it was definitely possible for us to do it much sooner. So at the end of 2023, my husband signed up to do a call position through his employer where he would be working more, working some hours that other people don't want to work basically like on holidays and weekends sometimes. And because of that, his base pay was increased through his employer and he gets paid for the on-call hours that he does as well. So he made significantly more so far in 2024 than he did in 2023 and in the previous years. So because of this extra income, we have been able to make a ton of progress this year, much more than I originally expected to be able to make this year on our debt payoff. So at this point in the year, if you look at how much debt we have paid off as of the end of September of 2024, we have paid off $46,445 in total of debt this year which averages out to $5,161 of debt paid per month. So remember, we just recently got under the $100,000 mark. We actually have $99,516 of debt in total, but we'll round that up to 100 just to make our numbers nice and clean and easy to work with. And we will round our average amount of debt that we have paid per month down to 5,000 from 5,161. So if you have $100,000 of debt and you're able to pay off $5,000 of debt per month, 100 divided by five is 20. So it should take us 20 months if things can keep going as they have been going in 2024. If we can continue that on, we should theoretically be debt free by May of 2026. However, I do wanna be realistic about this goal and I don't wanna put like an unrealistic date on it. Yes, in a perfect world, if we continue what we've been doing, we should be able to pay off the debt by May of 2026. 
but I also know that life happens and as a homeowner, things come up that you might have to pay for. As a parent, you might have medical bills for your children or you know things that they need that you weren't expecting. Like two years is a long time for kids. They might change a lot. Um, I'm expecting to have to pay for braces for at least two of my boys. And there's just expenses that come up when you're a parent or when you own a home or when you're a human being who is trying to live your life that you might not always be able to plan for ahead of time. Not to mention my cats are fighting in the background and if one of them hurts the other one, I might have to take them to an emergency vet appointment and that would be really expensive as well. So my point is life does happen and I don't want to have the idea in my head that just because we paid off $5,000 of debt on average this year that that will always be the case. I certainly hope that it will be, but I'm pushing back our goal to the end of September of 2026. So basically that gives us 24 months or two years to pay off debt. Very convenient how that worked out. So this month, October of 2024, is going to be month number one. And my plan for this series is basically to make a video every single month. If it, if it turns out to be too much, maybe I'll change it to every quarter. But if you guys are enjoying the series and I have things to share every single month, I think I'm going to do a video every single month going over our progress. I do a debt update video anyway, so I might include that in these videos for going forward. But I want to talk about the progress that we've made within the last month. I would also like to talk about things that we did well and things that we could have done better to pay off even more debt. I do think that's important to kind of talk about the ups and downs because right now I'm very, very motivated to pay off debt. But I know that two years is a long time and there could be some months in there where I'm not as motivated. So I want to be able to talk about like the ups and downs, how we're feeling. Are we feeling like we're missing out on anything or are we still able to pay off the debt and still enjoy life as much as possible? So in this series, that's kind of the stuff that you can expect, like a monthly update on where we're at, how we're feeling. And then you can also let me know if you're watching this, what else you would like to see in this series. Are there specific things that you would like me to include other than just like our debt balances and how we're feeling about those debt balances? Um, just whatever you think, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I don't have a solid plan for these videos yet. I'm just really excited to do them and to keep myself motivated to pay off the rest of this debt and to push to do it by October or the end of September. Really, I want it to be like by September 30th of 2026. And of course, we'll have some periodic checkpoints within the series as well to determine if we are on track with our goals. It should be pretty easy because $5,000 is an easy number to track mathematically, but some months we might only pay off $4,700 of debt. Another month we might pay off 5,300 and that might average out to 5,000, but I obviously would want in October of 2025 to be under the 50K mark. So that's like a huge milestone that I wanna make sure that we hit as well to be on track to hit this final debt payoff goal. And I still do wanna pay off Fed Loan 5, the smallest loan that we have right now by November of this year. If we do it in December, I'll be okay with that, but I think we should be able to do it in November. So that's kind of the first small chunk that I'm gonna work on. And then we would love to be under $50,000 in October of 2025. And we also want to have the Highlander loan paid off by the end of 2025. So the end of December of 2025, I want that Highlander loan gone. And I want to start 2026 with just my husband's SoFi loan, which is the last of his student loans. So the other thing I wanted to talk about were retirement contributions. So I did mention in a couple of videos that I wanted to see if it was worth it to reduce our retirement contributions in order to get out of debt faster. And based off of the numbers that we have done this year, I don't think it's necessary for us to reduce retirement contributions in order to hit this goal. However, I did reduce re retirement contributions for Mark because I want to prioritize putting some money into our emergency fund as well. As you guys know, we are a single income family and that has been kind of a stress for me to think about if something happened to Mark or his income, where we would be. So I reduced his retirement savings basically 
to still keep our pace with debt payoff, but also to be able to save a little bit into our emergency fund without hurting the debt payoff. So that wasn't my original intention when I was talking about doing that. I was like, well, it'll just help us get out of debt faster. And I guess theoretically I could keep his retirement contributions low um, for the next two years until the debt is paid. But my plan right now is to just do it for one year until we have our emergency fund in a good solid place. And then I will increase his contributions back up and just go you know, back to the debt payoff in the savings that we were doing before, which was basically no savings. <laughs> so I want to have at least two months saved into our emergency fund over the next two years while we're paying off debt. Right now we have like a little over a month saved. Like we could make it for a month, but that's it. And I think when you're a family of five and you only have one solid income, that's a little scary. So that is why I still chose to reduce the retirement contributions, even though I don't think we necessarily need to in order to hit this goal. I do think the emergency fund is very important and that we've been neglecting it for far too long. So of course, one day I would love to have a six month emergency fund and you know, before that a three month emergency fund, but that will be a goal to hit after our debt is paid. But right now I'd just be able, like to be able to cover two months of expenses, have that you know, saved away into a high yield savings account so that if something did happen to Mark or to his income, that we could at least have a little bit of income until he could get like unemployment or until he could find a new job. Because with his line of work in the medical field, it's not easy to start a new job right away. Um, you have to go through paperwork and credentialing in order to legally work by our state you have to go through like months of credentialing so it's not like something like oh i got fired and a week later i'm going to start a new job that's not really how it works you have to put in a lot of time waiting for that credentialing paperwork to get filed so because of that i definitely want to have at least two months in our emergency savings and then we will throw out everything that we have to debt and then bring our retirement contributions back up to what they were before. So will this hurt our retirement savings? So in short, the answer is no, it will not. But I will, or I'm planning to do a more detailed video about our retirement savings and how much we should have when we retire, even with reducing a little bit for a very short period of time. I, I will do a video about that because I think it's really interesting to um, calculate how much you should have in retirement and it's just it's fun to do so why not share it in a video but the short answer is no it will not affect us and I can show you that with numbers in a future video so right now I'm feeling so optimistic so motivated about debt payoff and I'm really happy and excited to make this goal of September of 2026 happen maybe sooner we'll see but I'm so excited about it I'm feeling really optimistic and I know I won't always feel that way, but I do have some things kind of in the back of my head that I want to try to remember when I'm not feeling as optimistic as I am right now. So the first thing is what do we want to do once our debt is paid off? And I know I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit right now because our debt is not paid off yet. But I think if you are thinking about all of the things you want to do once your debt is paid off, that does help you to push a little harder and stay motivated to actually get it done. So obviously once our debt is gone, I talked about this a little bit, but my first number one goal will be to have a fully funded six month emergency fund. I've never had an, an emergency fund like that before and I know it's going to bring so much peace of mind. So that is goal number one. Goal number two will be to invest at least 20% into retirement and like brokerage accounts. Like if we max out Mark's retirement, we'll do like brokerage accounts as well. But at least 20% of our income to that, maybe more, we'll see. And then I obviously want to save for my boys' education so that they don't have to take out student loans and have years and years of debt payoff under their belts. I just want to help them get a head start in life that Mark didn't have because you know his parents weren't able to help him. And there's nothing wrong with that, but if you are able to help your kids, like we should be able to do, I would love to do that and to kind of give them a little bit of a head start. The next thing I really want to be able to do when we pay off all the debt is to basically either move or renovate our basement so that my mom can move in with us. So I'm thinking if we are completely debt free by uh, September of 2026, then at least two to three years later, I would like to 
make a decision on what we would like to do. I'm going to save up money for either paying for a down payment for a new house or for renovating our basement to make it into like an apartment for her. So once it does pay off, we'll be saving up for that as well. And I'm hoping it'll take us at least, or I'm hoping it'll take us no more than two years to be ready and make a decision on what we want to do with that money. It has always been the plan for my mom to move in with us when she is older um, and she is in great health. She can take care of herself right now, but I don't want to ever have to worry about her when she does get older. So we would love to have her live with us or on our property if we move um, so that we can be there for her if she needs anything because she is not married. So um, I don't want her to be alone unless she just really is in good health and wants to be alone. But if she wants to move in with us, I want that to be an option for her. And then the last thing that I'm really looking forward to when we are debt free is to travel. I know Mark really wants to take a big trip to Japan and I told him that is one thing that we will definitely save up for as soon as the debt is paid off so that we can do a huge celebration trip so that he can go to Japan. The boys are also really excited about that. I'm kind of excited about that too. Japan seems like a really cool place. Seems a little scary as well because I don't speak Japanese and that's, that language barrier I feel like will be kind of hard to overcome. But if we stay in like touristy areas, hopefully it won't be too bad. But I'm excited about that and I'm excited to travel to other places as well. I have never been outside of the United States and that is something that definitely needs to change soon. So those are kind of my plans for once our debt is paid to keep me motivated so I can think about those things whenever I'm feeling discouraged and not wanting to stick to this debt payoff journey. So I hope you guys are excited about this series. I know I am. Again, let me know if there's anything else that you would like me to include in the series and I'd be happy to do it. But uh, thank you guys always for your support. You guys have really helped us along this journey so far and I know you're gonna help us to get to that debt freedom date. So I appreciate you more than you know and I will see you in the next video. Bye.